Now, I had a big family. I had 15. I'm going to tail in. Now, according to my mom and all the other brothers and sisters, when we were, see, I have a twin sister, and um, she babysitted by putting us under the cotton trailer at the end of the rope. We had a, a blanket out there, and we just fall on sleep. She'd go to the end, come back, and check on us. But I do remember going behind them and trying to pick that little. And of course, as years went by, we progressed to the cotton pad, the sack that we had. We were sharecroppers. My dad always had it, and usually it's, it's a number of acres. It can go up to 120 acres, but I remember specifically it's around 40 acres. It's on the boss man's farm. Now, we did that on our time. From, from planting the cotton to then they call weeding it. Then, of course, you got planters now that do it for you. But uh, we would work in that 40 acres slot when we wasn't working for the boss man. So you get to cut, you get the cotton patch at 6 a.m. in the morning, and so and you get, you're through at 6 p.m. And then uh, we had chores to do on the farm for which is boss man's the, the cattle and the hogs and chickens and all them good things we did. We always had chores in the morning, chores in the afternoon. But anyway, but we would do that Monday through Saturday if if we wouldn't rain out or nothing. Usually it's Saturday at noon, he we're through for the boss man. We'd go home and eat. We'd go back on our 40 acre spot and we'd chop cotton, do whatever we gotta do the rest of the day, rest on Saturday, sometimes Sunday afternoon. Some depends on where you work. And then the whole thing of it is we took care of the 40 acres just as it was ours. And then when cotton picking time come, we had to do it the same way. Of course, back then, we wouldn't get to go to school first six weeks of school. That bus would drive on by and we wanted to get on it so bad, but we was out there picking as long as we could pick. Plum the sun goes down. And then every how many bales of cotton we got off of that makers for the boss man, the boss man would get half of it. We would get the other half. We would do the work, and that's why it's called share of cropping, and he, got, he made money off his own land. But we've always had that. When I got around 13, 14, I finally made what we call straw boss. This is the guy that goes around all over the farm. We had an old 54 Chevrolet pickup that I couldn't even see out of it. I had to get a tractor seated, John Deere, and set it up, and I could drive the heck out of it. But we'd go around all over the farm, pick up people on the farm. They'd be on the rails in the back and everything else, and I'd carry them to the spot. And then they would get off, and I never had a watch, but I had an old black guy that's from the farm that we dearly love, and he said, here, it's 6 o'clock. I said, all right, y'all get to work. Here I'm little 13-year-olds telling all them grown folks to get to work, see. But the, my job was I had a two-by-four that was nailed together about this long. I sharpened the hose. I'd have one sharpen. I could do that. Dad taught me that. And I could sharpen it, and I'd swap with them, and I'd stop in the middle field while they would keep going, and I'd do that. Time they got about 40 workers. It was almost lunch. And then I could go sit down in the truck if I wanted to, but the best times are following behind some of those older black folks that been around for years. They had the best stories. And I'd just chop right alongside them before I could hear the story.